Now, as a historic football governance bill is introduced to the Commons today to give fans a great voice in the running of their clubs, uh, we are now joined by the Culture Secretary, Lucy Fraser, on all of this. Good morning to you. We're also joined by Paul Coit, um, our Hi, sportsman here, who's, who's on the ball with all, all of this, Lucy. Um, Lucy, what, what, what does this mean? Fans always love the idea that they can determine what goes on, and we've had a few scares about this recently with the, uh, the breakaway European Super Super League. What are you trying to do here? Well, you're absolutely right. This is all about fans and we're trying to protect fans because uh, football has been the heart of our, uh, of our nation for 200 years and it's a massive cultural export. The Premier League is so important. But what we've seen is fans so disappointed when their clubs go into administration. And uh, what we've seen is devastation of communities, you know, communities like Bury, like Derby. And the reason is they're not, the clubs aren't financially sustainable. And uh, what we're therefore doing is bringing in a bill today to make sure that those clubs have the financial sustainability that they need. Lucy, I, I think it's brilliant what you're saying about fans and getting fans involved. But is it a good idea to get fans involved when it comes to board level, when it comes to the running of the club? Because obviously a lot of the time heart will probably rule overhead in these situations. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really important to get that right balance. So what we want to see is more fan engagement on really critical things that matter to fans, like badges, like colours, uh, like uh, whether the stadium should move. Because we've seen examples of when a stadium moves and that, that really destroys the local community and the club. But it will be a proportionate approach. We're not setting out exactly what that fan engagement should look like in a particular club because it will work differently in different areas. So, you know, a regulator will have powers to decide and have some discretion to ensure that that works on a local club level, you know, club by club. Um, Paul, the, you know, there you've got the Secretary of State. She, she's talking about what they're trying to do, what's going to be imposed. But there is problems here, well, isn't there? There is um, the whole situation uh, about foreign ownership. Of course. Um, and um, this, this points deduction, which we'll talk to the Minister about now, um, the four points off... Forest, Everton in a bit of a limbo as to what's going on there. And we're probably going to see more and more of this. I, th I think we are. And, and Lucy, I think the, the thing that I find interesting is when we talk about fans, again, it seems to be fans that suffer these situations when we get points taken away. And it always seems to come back to the fans, maybe not to the club. This is all about the fans in terms of uh, financial sustainability. I should make clear what we're doing today is making sure that fans have good, that uh, clubs have good financial plans in place, that their owners are fit and proper, uh, that they don't go therefore into administration because they're properly looked after. What the regulator will not do is get involved in the game. That's for football. That's for the football authorities. That's for the clubs. Um, so the, the, the legislation is very uh, tightly defined to make sure that what we do is make sure that these clubs don't go into administration. Since the Premier League uh, was formed in 1992, we've seen 64 administrations. It's that that destroys uh, the fan base. It destroys communities. And that is what this bill is all about. Uh, Lucy Fraser, we've talked a lot uh, on this programme and, and all the media on what has been a difficult few days for your boss, the Prime Minister. Last night, uh, the government successfully managed to vote down a series of amendments on his key Rwanda bill. But all the headlines this morning looking at uh, a bit of a bloody nose potentially for him in the Lords tomorrow. The Times saying risks losing the key vote on the Rwanda bill. And I just want to ask you when you think these flights are ever going to take off. Some suggestion that could be as late as June. Uh, we are hopeful that these flights will take place, uh, take off in the spring. Uh, we saw um, those those uh, amendments all fail in the House of Commons last night with strong majorities. Uh, obviously, it will go back to the Lords. But you know what we are doing as a government, as a Conservative government, is trying to ensure that we deter people from taking that journey. We want to see illegal immigration down. We want to see uh, people not making that crossing. And we do think that this bill uh, will be a significant deterrent for people uh, who would otherwise cross the channel. It's a, it's a big gamble, isn't it? 
I mean, the amount of political capital the Prime Minister has expended on a small proportion of those people being deported, and it's not just uh, political capital, it's taxpayers' money, £290 million of our cash. This is seen through three Prime Ministers and four Home Secretaries, and still not a single flight has taken off. This is a very difficult problem and countries uh, across the world are struggling with how to deal with uh, illegal immigration. You, you mentioned the cost. If we don't uh, manage to get this under control, we know that illegal immigration will cost us £11 billion in the years ahead. On an, uh, and so that's why, we are, that's why we're looking to tackle it. I, I should make clear that um, it's, it's really important to recognise that the government has taken a number of measures and as a result of that we've seen those illegal crossings come down by over a third already. So this is one part of our plan but we have other plans as well which are already in operation. You know, crossings from Albania down by 90% and what is clear is that we have a plan, we're already delivering and Labour Party have no plan uh, to tackle immigration at all. Uh, and uh, we are uh, hoping that the Lords uh, confirm the bill, uh, bring it forward, but certainly that's been the message we'll from the Commons. We'll have to see what happens tomorrow. You see, you didn't uh, bump into Barack Obama yesterday. Uh, there's a number of pictures of him in the front pages um, today. You know, a very charismatic political leader. And um, he calls into Downing Street to see the PM. And, of course, he's a man that knows all about migration as well. Mm. Yes, no, I didn't manage to bump into him. I would have loved to have had a chat. Uh, I understand it was a personal meeting and uh, no, I think it's always good to, to speak to uh, foreign leaders and former foreign leaders. Uh, in your role as Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport, of course, you uh, have oversight over channels like us here at GB News. You'll be aware uh, of the Ofcom ruling yesterday. Um, now, the channel has uh, doubled down and said they remain committed to having serving politicians hosting programmes on the channel. Do you support that position? I think uh, it's, I think the GB News does a fantastic job. I'm in favour of media plurality. I think a lot of you have a lot of viewers who are very interested in the output that that you have, as indeed uh, other channels do as well. Uh, GB News has uh, decided to be regulated by Ofcom, um, and you're obviously referring to some decisions that came out yesterday. I mean, it's, it's very clear that um, uh, there's a rule that doesn't allow. Um, MP, sitting MPs to present news, but does allow them uh, to present current affairs programmes. And uh, that is, uh, as I understand it, what presenters are doing at the moment in GB News. Uh, just to be clear, did you agree with that ruling? Because GB News has said that they feel as if the goalposts have been moved specifically because the programme was found to be impartial and that there wasn't a problem with the programme itself. It was just that somebody could have found it to be impartial. <laughs> Yeah, I think there were two decisions that Ofcom came to uh, in relation to GB News. One was in relation to impartiality, and that's a question for them. They are the regulator. And the other was uh, whether there was a breach of the Broadcasting Code, uh, because the Broadcasting Code says that a sitting uh, MP cannot be uh, present news, as in uh, live news that is happening, but they can present current affairs programmes. Um, and that was the second part of the Ofcom ruling.